Hello there and welcome to another video here on this Esoteric Circle YouTube channel. Pete Haskins here with you. In this video we are going to explore the nature of your awakening. And as we often do here, it's going to be seen through the lens of Esoteric Christianity. Whether it be through the Gnostics, the Eastern Orthodox, or Gurdjieff and Spensky and Moraviev in the Fourth Way, we are going to be specifically looking at the role of shocks to our body and our mind and our spirit. And the nature of the first fundamental law of the universe, what Gurdjieff called the Law of Three, uh, which speaks of every phenomenon in the universe as having three elements or forces within it, namely a positive, negative, and a neutralizing force. And Ospensky writes in In Search of the Miraculous that uh, Gurdjieff also placed a great emphasis on this second fundamental law of the universe, namely the law of seven or the law of octaves. Now, contained within both of these laws are the blueprints of our isolation and death as we take to our crooked path upon this prison that we call a planet. As the Valentinian Gnostics would tell us, we need a guide to help, help us make it out of this oubliette we call earth. And this guide we call Yeshua, the Christ. Now, Yeshua awakens our logos. He awakens our magnetic center. Yeshua awakens this Christique element within us, as Tyar would say, so that we can traverse through the 12 levels of hell with the archons nipping at our heels at every step. This is why Yeshua is so vital to us. As you awaken, one of the elements of that awakening is the realization that you are indeed living in the matrix and that your life has largely consisted of somnambulism or sleepwalking. Throughout this groggy existence, you have from time to time experienced moments of psychedelic remembering where it all seems so absolutely clear moments of pristine clarity where it all makes perfect sense and every blade of grass seems to be exactly where it should be every molecule of water transforming into perfection and every ray of sunlight landing precisely as it has always done these remembered moments are like a loop continued in a movie which you watch over and over until one day you awaken to the realization of this loop, this movie that is your life, that you relive over and over and over again, and you have the desire to cross over this threshold of that loop. What Gurdjieff calls the two intervals in the Law of Octaves at Mi and Fa, and later on at Si and Do, in the musical seven uh tone scale where the cosmic vibrations break down and divert their direction so that without great conscious effort a loop is created and you are quite literally right back where you started this loop is the nature of our life on this planet and it's why the gnostics had it right it is the nature of the second law of thermodynamics where all motion eventually stops what Tyar called the tangential energy, what Tyar termed radial energy, is the energy associated with love, generated through our thought patterns and our brain waves. And these vibrations are what uh, Gurdjieff called, it's what he called them. Now, in order to bridge the gap at me and Fa and Si and Do, you must employ shocks, which can be let's say, an episode of acute suffering where the old view of a consolidated self associated with your name, your job, your social identification is shattered and the ego admits in its long death stare that I am legion. I am many selves, really, and it is the lie of all lives to try and unsee the reality behind this awakening. Now, Holy Scripture contains many images of what the ego um, happens to the ego if it tries to unsee what has been seen. 
Lot's wife is a great example, and Yeshua speaks of this often when he talks about turning to the plow and never looking back. Now, in order to bridge the gaps in the law of octaves, you need an intense level of conscious efforts. Intense. And in order to raise your level of vibrations, these intense efforts must be continuous. Now, a very, very basic exercise, which has a long history within esoteric tradition, is cold water immersion or ablution. In the Shinto tradition within Japanese Buddhism, it is called misoji and is done in the dead of winter under a waterfall while reciting prayers. And the Hindus have the tradition as they bathe in the Ganges, praying that the cycle or loop of suffering will end in the mystery schools. And in particular, the Essenes, where Yeshua trained between the ages of 12 and 29 before he began his social ministry, had this tradition in the morning ablutions at the monasteries like Mount Carmel and Qumran, which were later trivialized into baptism and salvation and church membership. Now, regardless of the esoteric meaning, as little as Three to four minutes a day of an ice-cold shower or immersion in cold, icy water will improve blood circulation, lower blood pressure, serves as an antidepressant with a triggering of an increase in dopamine as well as the increase in electrical impulses, the seat of the peripheral nerve endings of the brain. And last but not least, cold water ablutions build discipline and therefore allows for the development of character. In particular, our overemphasis on the motor center and our collective obsession with defying or at least delaying death is confronted and the truth fourth way can begin to take place where the three centers are consolidated by our central command center or magnetic center is established permanently and the true purpose of life can be addressed, that of theosis. Whether you are Hippocrates or Thomas Jefferson or Wim Hof or the Essene Yeshua, you can testify to the benefits of cold water immersion. But beyond these temporal improvements in circulation or the increase in dopamine levels or the improvement of the health of your skin, the benefits of the shock to the sleepy system of mechanical weights and pulleys that make up your own body can be priceless. We need every shock to awaken us from our sleepwalking, to awaken us to our true purpose on this planet, that of discovering our element of God within us and returning it to its original pure state. This is theosis, and this is the true purpose at the heart of esoteric Christianity.